I have here a Sanyo TPM 2100 AM FM quartz clock radio and TV picked up at uh, antique store for $12 and uh, I just love fiddling with this kind of stuff here's the specs on it it runs on 9 volts or it's got an AC adapter here um, and it also has a rechargeable battery pack which doesn't have it but um, you could easily make one so um, it was manufactured uh, in 1980 May of 1980 you can see that here and um, I'm sure it's black and white um, here's the TV AM and FM setting and the VHF and UHF VHF is you uh, low and high external antenna the antenna whip is in nice shape it's got a quartz clock which is really nice that's uh, really what I why I bought it because it has a quartz clock built in and a timer and an alarm uh, it'll come on either bring the TV or radio on or it will do a buzzer and um, it's got the clock built in and, an, and a, a backlight for the uh, for the clock so the uh, clock uses a a uh, watch battery and uh, which is found underneath this little thing here and it uses uh, five double A's or um, a battery pack rechargeable battery pack so I have not plugged it in have no idea whether it'll even fire up so let's just uh, Let's just do that. Let's just hook it up to uh, external power here. We got the original Sanyo 9 volt battery uh, eliminator, they used to call these things. And um, let's see, let's turn that off. Put it on radio AM. And uh, volume is really stiff, but. All right, let's just see what happens here. Remember, we're in the uh, we're in the house, so it's like a Faraday cage in here. So that's AM. Okay, that's my radio station right there had a little bit of hum I don't have anything playing on my radio station so let's try FM Okay, so the FM radio works. Okay. The, eight, the light probably, let's see. Yeah, the light probably works off of the battery uh, for the uh, clock. So, I don't have any battery there. All right, here's the acid test. Let's see if we get a some video. Oh, that's a good sign. And we'll turn the overhead light off. And uh, let's put on UHF because I've got um, yeah, leave it on UHF. Have, uh, 
vertical hold. Oops, sorry. Okay. Vertical hold, but we don't have any horizontal, and uh, <clears throat> there's no horizontal adjustment here, which is our problem. So we've probably got a weak capacitor in there that's preventing it from sinking automatically on horizontal. Okay, so we don't have any horizontal lock, but let's keep going. We'll go up to another channel here. Run the UHF band. And I think I've got a <clears throat> one around 50 or 60, somewhere in there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, there we go. The caps must be reforming. So let's check and see if we've got a channel down here, channel 27. get it to lock in with uh, adjusting vertical come on there you go okay so there's uh, let's see let's fire up one of the honeymooners uh, TV shows Okay, here it comes. It's a nice little set. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back up and find that other channel. 65 or whatever it was. Yeah, there we go. Locked in that time. There we go. Nice crisp picture. Okay, so the radio and TV works. Let's see if we can get this clock working. We can find a battery for it. And uh, we'll try the alarm function. And uh, while I'm looking for a clock battery, let's pop, uh, let's pop five double A's in there and see how it runs on batteries just for kicks okay Actually, let's put this back down here. I opened that up to get the battery out. It uses a silver oxide battery. Okay. 
we can get this back on here without everything popping back up. Okay, that's great. Oh, look at that. Come on. Come on. Lock it. Come on. Yeah, those caps are just... <clears throat> Let's see how Ralph Crandon is doing. Just can't quite get it to sync, can we? I'm adjusting the vertical hold here to try to get it to catch. Yeah. So we got a probably got a poor cap in there that's just it may eventually lock here bit of tearing there we go a little bit of tearing and that's a capacitor see that at the top of the screen and let's increase the uh, contrast here that's the brightness there's the contrast just a little unstable and that is a uh, bound to be a capacitor issue already I think I have a VHF going uh, channel 13 maybe VHF high yeah, I think it's channel 13. Let's see if it pulls it in. Might be channel 8. Now that I think about it, I think it was channel 8 or 10. Yep, there it is. The Roku. Got the Roku running on VHF channel 10. So that's pulling in beautifully as well. So we've got both VHF and UHF working. And the audio, or the, the radio is working. So now we just got to get this clock going and and uh we'll do a little bit of a cleanup and we should be good to go all right i don't know that you're going to be able to see this on the video but i'm going to turn the lights on and then zoom in um this battery clip has a little bit of corrosion on it in there a little bit of corrosion here so what i do is use vinegar yeah, you can see the corrosion on those terminals. See the blue, green. So let's get some vinegar here and, and try to see if we can get rid of that. Yeah, it's foaming. The vinegar is acidic in the alkaline um, and the acid interact with one another. Yeah, 
that's taken the corrosion off. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I just don't want it to get worse and ruin the battery case. Especially watch battery. It's a little better. And then let's see. Got a battery here. Okay, we replaced the battery in the uh, there we go. Replace the battery in the clock. And it seems to be working okay. So Let's see uh, how we set it. Mode. There we go. That's how we set it. So let's see. We'll set the time for the clock. Let me figure that out. Okay, it's 517. PM. Okay. And we'll leave we'll just accept the okay. So there we go. 517. So we're gonna set the timer for 530. Take that, take that. AM and PM is not changing. Oh, there we go. Didn't even notice that. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Let's make it 520. Okay, so the alarm is set for 520. And now we're going to set the uh, thing to turn on the radio. And while we're waiting for it, set it on timer. See the timer? Oops, there we go. See the timer notification? And while we're waiting for it, let's see if the, the light works. Sure doesn't look like it, does it? Oh, I don't have any batteries in here. Let's plug it in. We wouldn't get any clock to work, would we? Yeah, so the light is not working. Pushing the light button. And we're not getting any light. So we'll check that out just for giggles. Um, well, let's just leave it plugged in here. And uh, we'll sit here and watch it. watching uh, the Roku uh, the Roku channel so let's switch to uh, UHF
Rose. Well, that's a nice little set, isn't it? It's a really nice little TV. And that's going to clean up nice. There's a little bit of grunge on it. We'll get that cleaned up and uh, take a look at that light. Um, I think it's a little tiny backlight, probably an incandescent bulb. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just not getting anything to light up. Could be a dirty switch. It's a membrane switch. And it could be just a dirty membrane. So I might put it just a tiny spray on that and let it soak. We'll see if that makes any difference. All right, I think we got the light working. There we go. Not real bright, but that's, I think, to be expected. Yeah, so a little spray on that switch from above was all it took. Looking great. Let's see how Ralph Prandom is doing. Well, he's finished. Come on, come on. There's probably a there is probably a pot inside that will let us lock this down. And um, keep in mind this. Uh, this DVD has protection on it and so it creates a havoc with the vertical circuits and it's just designed to do that to protect from being copied but uh, there you go it's a beautiful picture